I think what happens is marketers end up ironically buying into marketing. So you get all these different MarTech tools and they come and tell you that, you know, you push this one button and all this magical stuff happens and customers start flowing in and, and money starts rolling and you're good to go. <laughs> That's never the case. Welcome to What Gets Measured, a NinjaCat podcast about marketing performance management, metrics, and effectiveness. Because what gets measured gets managed. I'm your host, Jake Sanders. Shamir Duverso is the managing director, chief strategist, and co-founder of Smart Panda Labs, a digital experience agency that helps B2C enterprise marketers navigate digital transformation to create the experiences their customers demand. Shamir is responsible for business management, marketing, and strategic development. He has a passion for making minorities part of the business conversation and an interest in promoting diversity across his field. He's worked across several industries from travel to entertainment to technology with brands like Southwest Airlines, the Walt Disney Company, and NBC Universal. And today, he's here at the Ninja Cat Podcast to talk about digital transformation and marketing. Shamir, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Jake. That was a great introduction. I didn't know I could sound kind of good. So that was, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, in a paragraph, you know, we're looking good, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, it's it's all true, I'm assuming. And if not, I guess we'll find out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so well, let's, let's jump right into digital transformation. Everyone talks about it, but the definitions seem to be all over the map. What's your definition of digital transformation and how do you see marketers fitting into the equation? Yeah, like you said, definitions are all over the map, and I'm I'm sure I could quote some Gartner or, or Accenture definition of digital transformation. But right. for me, it's just about the fact that your customers expect a certain experience, um, and that they expect that experience to be delivered in digital, right, and online in some way, shape, or form. And, and ultimately, digital transformation is the the means by which the mechanism by which your organization prepares itself to deliver that digital experience that's being expected. Um, so it's really about how you drive the changes organizationally, and not just technology, but across strategy, across people, um, across um, processes that ultimately allow you to deliver that modern digital experience. And so what so what do you think in marketers have to be doing? Do, do, do I mean, it, the MarTech... Frankenstack. I mean, everybody has a big stack of tools that they're using, and they're feeling digitally transformed. Um, what, what, what's what's the what's the digital transformation piece for marketers? Yeah, for marketing, it really comes down to saying, okay, great. You know, marketing is as a subset of that, right? It's it's just that component of the overall digital experience in which we're trying to communicate a certain message um, to the consumer, to the potential customer, to to past customers. And then drive them back to that uh, that experience that we have for them. Right. So for marketers, it's really about saying, okay, how do I leverage technology in order to deliver that experience that's being expected? Um, and for marketers, that can really be a challenge because sometimes there can be this huge gap, this huge disconnect between marketing and what they want to do and their understanding of the technology and what the technology can do and, and how to best use and leverage that technology. So for marketers, the challenge with digital transformation is really saying, how do we appropriately articulate what kind of experience we want to deliver from a marketing standpoint so that we can configure and, and, and set up those tools in order to help us to accomplish that goal and actually deliver that endpoint? So and do you, do you see that marketers are kind of doing it uh, backwards, maybe, maybe just using the tech as, as a proxy for strategy, or, or do you see... I mean, how, how do you see marketers kind of failing to leverage uh, the, the, the tech? Um, I think you, the way you said it as well, it's, it has become a proxy. Uh, I think what happens is marketers end up ironically buying into marketing. So you get all these different MarTech tools and they come and tell you that, you know, you push this one button and all this magical stuff happens and customers start flowing in and, and money starts rolling and you're good to go. <laughs> That's never the case. It's never that easy. It's it's never so simple. You don't need IT or you don't need anyone technical. Only a marketer can do it. I, I have never, ever seen any of the plethora of MarTech tools out there ever be so simple that that is, that is the case. Right. Um, and, and marketers get fooled by that. And they think, okay, great. Yeah. I'll, I have this tool. I'll be able to do all these wonderful things. You know, look at this feature list. 
they get pulled in by these demos. Yeah, I want to do this. I want to do that. And they just they just end up starting at the wrong point. They end up starting with kind of the possibilities of the tool and all it can do instead of saying, well, what are the tactics that I need to be delivering for my customer? You know, what are they telling me um, either by means of direct feedback or or the data that we're already collecting on them? What are they telling me about the experience that I want? And then saying, okay, great. If that's the experience I need to be delivering, what technology can help me deliver that experience? Mm. What technology can help me create those different touch points and be able to drive that in a way that is going to resonate with my customers and the different segments of customers that I'm dealing with? Perfect. And that's where marketers get caught up. They, they, they get caught up in, in not doing that in the right order. Um, and then they get trapped into saying, we're going to have this technology and we're going to try to do all these cool and different things. And either A, they end up doing all those cool and different things, but they're not really moving the needle because there's no rhyme or reason to it. Or B, they end up doing none of those things, cool and different things, because they don't understand what they need to do to, to do those things, right? They don't have the, the know-how and expertise. Right. Uh, and, and and I mean, this kind of leads into the second question about uh, dashboards and per, you know performance metrics, analytics. We have all of them, you know, platform specific ones. They're they're in your CRM. They're they're coming from your customers. They're coming from your campaigns. Uh, we, we collect all these metrics, but there's still a thirst for analytics that lead to those insights. How how do you make information actionable in regards to analytics? Like, what's your what's what's your take on that? I think it really comes down to saying, first of all, let's let's kind of boil down the analytics into what is actionable. Uh, not every data point is actionable. There's a big gap between what we can capture and what we should capture. And I think we live in a world where because we can capture everything, sometimes we get caught in that cycle of saying, we're, we're going to measure this and we're going to measure that. And there's just such a sea of data to go through. And it's not necessarily all useful. Often, a lot of the things that we capture isn't very useful. So being able to isolate and say, what data points can we capture are actually going to help answer questions about our customer, about what they think about their interactions with us, about where they are in their interaction, um, about what they're doing and what they're not doing and, and the why behind that. So that ultimately we can tell that story. Um, and I think ultimately when it, when it all comes down to it, it's about telling that story. Mm. Every person is on that, we call it a journey, call it an arc, call it a story, but every person is trying to accomplish something in particular. They're trying to learn certain things, get comfortable enough to make that decision that we as marketers want them to make. Um, we have to understand what that is and mm -hmm. use that to tell that story and put that picture together so that we can understand well, what are the pain points in that story? Where are they getting caught up so that we can say, okay, this is a point that we can address. This is something that we can do here. And, and oftentimes, since we don't come at it from that context, the context of the customer, the context of what is their story and what are they trying to do, we end up getting caught in this morass of data and, and not really end up doing anything with it. Mm. And, and so f finding those pain points, I mean, I remember in a previous iteration of my marketing career, I, I picked up the phone and called 100 clients just to ask them general questions like what their experience of the product was, you know, where, where, where their pain points were. And it was illuminating because before I actually talked to the customers, I was kind of going off what I saw and what I thought and sort of my preconceptions. I mean, what's the best way that, that you think getting customer information, is it, is it interviews or is there a way to do that scalably or how, how do you get to customer insights? Yeah, I think it's honest, it, it has to always be a, a mix and, com and combination of the two. I mean, people in our industry always say that this is an art as much as a science. Mm -hmm. um, so I think obviously there's great value to gathering large amounts of data to understanding what's happening from an event standpoint on the website to understand what's happening via experience analytics, um, to be able to pull that information in and be able to look at that very quickly, you know, via dashboards, to be able to analyze it and dig in. All those things are super valuable. I still think that direct contact with your customer, and maybe it's a focus group, maybe it's sending out a survey, um, but I think that that direct information, shared information from the customer is still valuably important because that's what creates context. Um, that's where you begin to understand, okay, this is what we're trying to do. I, I remember, if I could tell a quick story, Yeah, yeah. I remember um, early in my career working at NBC Universals, working with the parks and resorts, mm -hmm. and um, one of the parks in Orlando um, 
they have a big competition with the, with the Disney park in Orlando. And there's a lot of kind of, you know, back and forth there in terms of trying to grab market share with right. Disney. Yeah. And so many decisions has is the case with so many companies um, were made at the time just based on, okay, well, this is what we need to do. And that's what we need to do. We need to be bigger and we need to be better. And sometimes you just have to kind of take a step back and, and, and again, think about the context here and say, look, look Disney is, they're driving the majority of this traffic. Uh, you know, they're large, they're dominant, they're driving the majority of this traffic. If you really want to know what your message should be, go out in the park, go go talk to someone, wow. ask them, have you been to Disney? If they say no, then move on to the next person. If they say, yes, I've been to Disney. Okay, great. You know, why did you choose to come here too? And and, and their answer, that, that's your message. <laughs> they, they'll, they'll tell you what it is. They'll tell you what it is that, well, we decided to come here as well as Disney because we wanted to experience great roller coasters or, or you know whatever the case is right? right right but just getting that that raw information from them is going to be always your best starting point and then you're going to put that's going to put all the other information data that you have in context to be able to better understand okay this is what it's telling me and and i'm i mean how rare i it, just kind of putting my finger in the air and testing the weather patterns and marketing it seems rare that marketers are actually talking to customers. Would you agree with that? Or do you think I'm being, am I making a grand summation here? I mean, what's your thoughts? No, you, you are 100% right in, in experiences that I've had. <laughs> oh, in, no. You know, yeah, I mean, 100% right. It's just, it's just not something we think about. I think it's just, and you alluded to it earlier, it's just, you know, you've got your Frankenstack, you've got all this data in front of you. You're seeing all these tactics that, you know, the MarTech vendors are saying you can do this, you can do all these fancy things, and you just start throwing stuff against the wall and seeing what sticks. And it's just like, we're getting stuff done. All, you know, awesome, great. Like, we're getting stuff done. Um, and, and we've got all these fancy reports, and this is measuring all the things that we're doing. And you just get caught in that cycle. And it's like, you know, what, what are we trying to do here? Like, what, what are we working toward? And that, that just so easily gets lost time and again in, in large enterprise companies. That's again, that, that's what digital transformation should be about. It should be about saying, again, who is the customer? What experience do they want? How do we transform not just the technology, but our processes all to align to drive and, and deliver that? Yes. Wow. Yeah, it, it's, it's unfortunate because it does seem like a lot of work, um, you know, that's, that's, that's ancillary to the strategic stuff, the tactical execution. But if you don't know why <laughs> you're doing things, but you know you're doing what, you know, it, it, it can end up, you know, you're just busy without, uh, you know, hitting the bottom line of business. And exactly. That, yeah, that just seems bizarre. And I could see that digital transformation might be a way to exacerbate the problems you have. I mean, you know, there, there could be somebody that digitally transforms and, and it's a net negative, you know, mm -hmm. experience for them. So basically coming from that place of understanding customers understanding what they need and then adjusting your strategy there is is there ever a way that the i mean strategy shouldn't override customer stuff i mean I, I i'm thinking right now just freestyling mcdonald's if somebody's you know there's probably somebody out there that doesn't like their fries you know mm -hmm. and but mcdonald's isn't going to change the way they do their fries for one person is, is is there a way that you can balance sometimes customer feedback with strategy or is it the customer is always right. I know. I, I mean, it's funny that you say that because to me, like in its purest form, that's what strategy is. Mm. Strategy is the overlap between the customer and what they want and what their desires are and your business and what it wants and what its desires are. Strategy is where those two things meet. That That is your strategy because you're not going to be all things to all people, or at least you shouldn't try to be. Some companies do, but you shouldn't try to be all things to all people. You know, you, you have to understand where that overlap is because not every customer is going to do what you want them to do, or every prospect is going to do what you want them to do. And that's fine. You, you got to be at peace with that. You got to be okay with that. And then you got to say, okay, well, who, who can I move? Who can I influence? Who can I encourage and persuade? And what is it they want? And how does my product or my service match up with that? Mm -hmm. And when you find where those two things meet in the line, that's your strategy, or at least that's the foundation of it anyway. God, that's so great. It seems so simple, but it's very, <laughs> it can be very complicated. Um, thank, thankfully, you're here to help us. So, <laughs> so another thing that may help 
is having different voices in the room, different people to understand campaigns and customer insights. And, and that's why I think diversity in marketing is, a, is, a, is essential because there's we've all seen the campaigns where you're like, wow, you didn't run this by anybody? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, did you think to ask someone? Um, diversity, you know, equity, inclusion, all these things, it's, it's, it's spoken a lot, but it isn't used a lot. What, what's your take on the importance of diversity in marketing? How has this blind spot been a disservice to the industry and, and what can we do to fix it? Um, I think you, you alluded to it. It's, it's really about perspective. Um, it's about the fact that you you as a marketer are trying to message and communicate to a diverse world. And if if you're not diverse, if your team or, or the, the teams that you work with aren't diverse, then how can you properly articulate a message to that world? <laughs> um, you're, just, you're just never going to be able to. It's, it's never going to align and match up. Um, there's there's aspects of, of things, whether you're talking to a different gender or a different race or a different nationality, that you're just never going to truly be able to understand because you can never come at it from that perspective. Um, and because that's the case, it's going to negatively impact your ability to message um, and influence and create the kind of experience that that person has from their worldview. Right. Um, and so that, that's how it's hurt marketing. Um, I think you know, we're starting to do a better job of it than we have in the past. Um, I think digital marketing, ironically, is is more behind the curve on that than probably just marketing in general in terms of doing that. Um, just because, you know, digital marketing has a field, hasn't just penetrated into as many kind of ethnic groups and, 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 and racial groups as, as kind of general marketing has overall. I, I remember watching this documentary on uh, Netflix about a music producer, Quincy Jones. Mm, yes, and, love that. Yeah. And, you know, he said something funny. He said he grew up in the south side of Chicago. Um, I want to say it was, you know, the, I, I can't remember when it was, maybe the 30s, 40s. Yeah. And he said when he was a kid, he wanted to be a gangster. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he said the reason for that was is because that's what he saw. And, mm-hmm. and, and you want to be what you see. So, you know, the lack of diversity perpetuates a lack of diversity, right? Because it's not there, you know, a a young kid of a certain race or a certain gender may not see, you know, digital has a means by which to say, oh, yeah, I I aspire to that because it's like, well, no one in that field looks like me. So that's not what I should be doing. I should be doing this other thing. These these are the people that look like me. So, you know, we do have voices, certainly of different, you know, genders and races in the digital field. And I think just giving a platform to those voices so that people in the next generation can see, oh, okay, that is something I can aspire to. That person looks like me. Mm. You know, I, I can be that. Then that's going to end up solving the problem, right? It's going to move things in the right direction because now people can can match that up with, you know, with their own aspirations. Well, and it's, it's my, 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 my tiny brain is turning now because I'm thinking about diversity also in the examples that we, uh, well, <laughs> exemplify in marketing, we're comparing ourselves to Coke. We're comparing mm-hmm. ourselves to Apple. We're comparing ourselves to, you know, these big multinational companies. And, you know, the tiny garden variety marketer is saying, well, why can't we have what Apple has? Why, why can't mm-hmm. we have what Coke has? I, I, is there also... Uh, a thought to diversifying the examples of good marketing and just normalizing um, just, I mean, am I, am I, kind of, I don't know if I'm speaking, I, it, does this make sense? You know, it's like you're comparing yourself to these giants, but you only, you don't really have that big of a budget, you know, and, and for you to expect that you're going to have the same brand loyalty as Coke or Apple when you sell HVAC equipment do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. is, do, do you see that the diversity and examples of good marketing also negatively impact marketers? I think it does, because I think what happens with a large brand like that, um, it, to, to certain degrees, depending on how you look at the brand and so forth, is that you become this thing where it's like, okay, well, I need to be able to speak to all these people. If I'm going to be, you know, mm. Coke, if I'm going to be Walmart, I need to be able to, you know, to give all these people what they want. But if you think about it, even if you look at a large brand like that, if you really understand what they're doing, I mean, there are people who love Walmart and there are people who hate it. Yep. There are people who love Apple and there are people who hate it. There are people who love Southwest Airlines and people who hate it. And, and I would argue large or small, the best brands are the ones that have that, that kind of dichotomy, that they have people who love them and people who hate them. And I think sometimes we get so wrapped up in their sheer size and scope and presence 
that right. we forget that the reason that they're like that, or at least a number of them are like that, is because they're both loved and hated. Mm. And I think coming to peace with that, that in and of itself kind of brings a diversity because now you know, you know, this, these are the people I'm speaking to. And these other people, not only may, not, may they not um, be interested in my product, they might hate my product. <laughs> they might never be interested in buying my product. <laughs> and that's okay because there's another group of people who are in love with it and think it's the best thing ever and who are completely loyal to it. And I think that mentality, that, that shift in viewpoint, I think to your point brings a level of diversity that's that's needed in, in marketing. Yeah. And so and so now I'm thinking about uh strategy wise, thinking I'm only going to talk to the people that love me. ABM is basically that account-based marketing is this let's find the 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 folks that are gonna convert and just talk to them versus this other one where I'm just gonna put a billboard out on the highway and say, whatever, whoever sees it's fine. It, it, those are those are very extreme, but it seems like digital transformation shunts strategy towards ABM and only talking to the fans, generating that fan love. Um, do you see a, a pitfall there, or or is 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 it like cause the methodology for Coke? Coke is everywhere, yeah. uh, you know, and they don't care if you're a Pepsi person. Um, yeah. Is there a way that the the Joe and Jane marketer out there that can strategize a little bit bigger, or does ABM kind of block us from potentially reaching the right audience? I'm just maybe riff on that. Yeah, no, I think when I think about it, I think about it in terms of like some key steps, right? So I think the first the first step is it's about segmentation. So. Mm -hmm. You have to think about the terms of who you're talking to. There's different groups, different audiences within that. Um, and any brand, including a, a brand as large as Coke, understands that. Right. Um, they don't market to everyone the same way. I think about like a brand like um, like Geico mm. um, and, or Progressive even. And the various commercials they run, the, the various threads they have with these commercials, you know, that's not accidental. Mm -hmm. Each thread is talking to a different group of people. They're, they're different types of commercials for different groups of people. So marketers need to think about that and say, well, okay, well, what, what are the segments I'm talking to here? Who are the different audiences I'm talking to? What's relevant to each of those audiences? And then how do I target that? And I think that's what digital transformation empowers. It empowers you to say, what are those signals that are telling me no, that this person's in this segment? Great. What's relevant to them? And let me push this content or this message to them in a way that, that most resonates with that group. Ooh. And I think that's what digital transformation is empowering. It's the ability, the foundation and framework to be able to do that. And a key part of digital transformation that often gets left out is that component, that framework that centers around experimentation. Because mm. it doesn't matter how much data you have. It doesn't matter how fancy your technology is. When all is said and done, you're still just guessing. Like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm guessing what Jake likes. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. I'm not inside Jake's head. True. So I've, I've, I've got to experiment and I've got to see what does or doesn't Jake respond to, what, what does or doesn't resonate with him or the, the audience group that I've, that I've lumped him into. Um, so that constant experimentation, that constant iteration has got to be part of that. Um, that's what's going to allow digital transformation to do what it's supposed to do, which is to keep learning, to keep integrating, to iterating to keep improving. Ooh, ooh, that's, I'm going to put that on a bumper sticker. Um, so let's go into story mode. Uh, do you have a Cinderella story about digital transformation? A, a, an instance where an organization pivoted into success? Uh, and conversely, do you have a horror story about digital transformation that you could share? Yeah, um, I, I could think of a story, um, uh, actually a client that we work with in, in higher education, that's done a great job of, of building the right foundation and framework. So for us, it's about the earlier kind of half of digital transformation is about that foundation and framework. That's how you kind of set the tone for it. And then that's what allows you to kind of be able to grow and mature moving forward and really become a leading company. Mm. So when we think about foundation and framework, we're thinking about, okay, what are the right people? Um, what are the right tactics? What, what's the basic tool set we need here? Um, how are we gathering the data? How are we analyzing it and deriving insights? How are we experimenting on it? Mm -hmm. Like if we can get those kind of those six key components in place, that foundation framework is going to allow us to move forward. It's going to allow us to iterate and turn the way that we need to and be able to accomplish something. Um, and this particular 
company organization rather I'm thinking of in higher education, they were able to do that. They were able to take the time and say, okay, what are we trying to accomplish? Who are we trying to speak to? What technology do we need in order to speak to them in a way that resonates? Mm -hmm. And they were able to put in the right CRM system. They were able to put in the right marketing automation system. They were able to put in the right experimentation platform to redo their analytics to make sure that they were getting the data they wanted to get into. Right. Um, they were able to find the right partners um, and they were able to say, these are the baseline tactics that we know that we need in order to have a, a positive customer experience with uh, the people to whom we're communicating. Love that. And then they were able to say, great, now let's, let's start filtering through this data. What are the key data points we want to look at? Let's look at these on a consistent basis, analyze and say, okay, this is going to drive our experimentation roadmap to begin to say, how do we, how do we learn and how do we iterate and how do we begin to pivot? Um, and they really did a good job of making that transition into that new world. They started off without having a concrete plan or, or a pathway. Mm -hmm. They started off with some proprietary um, marketing technology, mm. but they moved into having a plan, a standard, a cadence, um, the right MarTech stack in order to be able to see some positive results. Mm. Um, and there's, of course, it's it's an, it's a never ending path, right? But right. at least they had the, the foundation and framework in place to be able to say, hey, now we can move forward and we can catch up. Mm, mm, I love that. And so what, what's a horror story? I mean, we, we know what the horror story ingredients would be, would be ignoring customer data, um, just, just sticking to the platform and hoping that it works that one button approach, you know, um, do you have like a, a horror story about digital transformation or, or is, is... I, I, I do, I have a few. Oh, oh, well then <laughs> let's, let's grab the popcorn. <laughs> Um, what I'm thinking of, and I, uh, I'll, I'll keep this uh, this company nameless for their for the sake of their own. You know. Yes, yes, names have been changed <laughs> to protect the yes, innocent. Yes, 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 yes. A long, long time ago, in a company far, far away. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, you know, it, this is this was a company. I, you know, I worked for, and there was a large initiative, digital transformation. You know, we're gonna we're gonna pay this large consultancy to come in. Uh, you know, seven uh, seven figure uh, contract to come in and 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 retool what we're doing technologically to to help move us forward and and do what we need to do to service our customers. And that seven figures were spent, and after a few years, there was absolutely nothing to show for it. Absolutely wow. nothing to show for it. Wow. No, no, nothing changed. No processes. Uh, nothing on the digital experience changed. No website. Everything was exactly the same. Wow, and you know, and unfortunately, it came down to an issue that we've seen time and again. It's this this disconnect between marketing and and IT. Um, it's like they're speaking two different languages. It's like you know, marketing is speaking French and IT is speaking I don't know Sanskrit. <laughs> right. I mean, they're just they're just nowhere near each other, and you can't. An organization can't effectively move forward with digital transformation without alignment between those two groups. Marketing wasn't able to effectively articulate what they wanted. IT wasn't able to effectively get out of marketing what they really wanted. So what they tried to build or what they tried to put together never matched. The third-party company was receiving you know, conflicting instructions from these two different groups. You know, the, the bills just end up racking up. The hours end up going up because no one can understand what's happening. And in the end, you have nothing to show for it. Wow. Um, so, you know, a, lo a lot of times, you know, we're our own worst enemies as marketers, um, just in terms of not making sure that we understand what we need to understand in order to properly articulate that so that we can bring the groups into alignment. Man, it's it just seems like tale as old as time because it, you know if you haven't experienced that at the seven figure level, you've experienced it at a sh much shorter level, um, smaller budgets. But it's still that frustration is there because people don't know how to articulate what they want. So you don't know the why, but you may have the what. You don't. You, you'll never get to the how. It just seems like that's that's just. I mean. So you said you had another one. Is it is it similar to that, or is it the same kind of vibe? Or it's it's a very similar vibe. It's it's again it's you know it's it's coming in. It's bringing in third parties. It's bringing in um, large you know well respected, well known companies, but not knowing how to effectively articulate what it is that you're trying to drive and what it is that you're looking for. Wow. Um, it, it's like going in and saying, well, we well, we want to make more money, and, and the company saying, well, <laughs> okay. I, I get that. Like that's that's why you exist. That's, sure. that's why you're in business. But yeah. like, what 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 is your plan to make more money? 
well, you know, we want to do this internet thing. Like that's, that seems to be what we should do to make more money. You know, of course I'm exaggerating, but you know, it's, it's, it's that kind of um, just very basic thinking in terms of not thinking this all the way through. Right. And then expecting someone to say, okay, now do that. Like here, here's a check. You, you, you go do that. And the company's like, do what? And unfortunately, a lot of companies will just cash the check and be like, all right, let's, <laughs> let's start working. Like, <laughs> let's, let's do this. Let's, you know, sure. I, you know, as long as the bill gets paid. Exactly. Um, well, well, so in, I'm thinking really quick about leadership. How, how, how do, I mean, marketers need to articulate stuff. IT needs to understand. But what's the role of leadership in getting digital transformation going? Like, like it, does it seem like it needs, you have great instrumentation, but you need an orchestra, you need a conductor for the orchestra. Yeah. Is, is, how, how does leadership play into this? Um, I think it ends up happening a, a couple of different ways, just depending on the company. I think sometimes leadership assumes that the people um, who are kind of in the in the guts of the project know what they're doing or, or they'll figure it out. Um, I think sometimes it's not maybe just not having the right leader. Um, I think oftentimes, uh, and this is starting to change for sure now, mm. but I think over the last, you know, call it 10, maybe 15 years, you had a lot of very senior leaders who just the internet was just very, very new to them. Um, and they didn't understand enough about it and the digital medium and uh, or even just the shift um, in control, um, the, the, the customer having so much more control than they did, say, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Sure. Yeah. Um, perhaps in the world where they kind of grew up, so to speak, um, mm. that they just, they just didn't know how to navigate digital mm. transformation. Mm. They didn't know how to, to kind of provide the kind of leadership that's needed in, sure, in, sure. in this kind of world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, we're starting to see the shift, you know, as, as people of a different generation are starting to take on those those key leadership roles and understand that better. Um, I think that's causing a shift. Mm -hmm. I think there are still organizations that still kind of cling to those old roles um, right. and, and don't quite understand that and, and don't maybe bring in a partner to help kind of orchestrate that and fill in those gaps. And it's funny because that's, that's why even what I do now, the company we started, that's why I started it was to help fill those gaps to, to kind of say, Love you that. need that expertise in there to make that connection, to make that translation. So that when marketing speaks French, someone can take the French and translate it into Sanskrit and, and IT says, oh, that's what you meant. Yes, we can do that and, and, and begin to move that forward. So I think a lot of times it's just leadership needing to recognize, okay, there's a gap here, whether I need to bring in an external resource, whether I need to hire a different person, I, I need to fill that because that, that kind of gap perhaps didn't exist you know, 15, 20, 25 years ago, but it exists today in, in, in the modern world. And now I need to fill that in a way that perhaps I wouldn't have thought of when I first started my career and when I was first learning. Mm. Well, it, uh, it makes me think. Um, the other day I was on Twitter and and someone was someone says, Under marketers need to understand how their companies make money." And someone mm. retweeted it and was like, "This is really important." And I was yeah. I was kind of like, "Wait a minute, hold on." There are a lot of marketers out there that don't know how the money comes in how you how how their organization makes money and you know if you're talking about a big brand how does coke make money it's not just by selling coke there's so right. many different diverse ways that income comes in is it a common theme that you see with marketers not understanding how a business makes money or is it the the fact that no one is articulating at the leadership level what those important metrics are. Is there, there's kind of like has to be a meet in the middle thing. But I, I could see that IT is just here saying, hey, I, I wrote the code or, or I gave you this proprietary thing and, and it should work. You know, but the marketers aren't understanding how the money comes in and the leadership isn't articulating that way. And then they have a data taxonomy question like a conversion is not an impression. You know, mm -hmm. but if you feel mm -hmm. like, oh, impressions are up, oh, that's a conversion. And you're like, well, and then, you know, 18 months later, you're fired. You know, um, yep. Yep. Can, you, can you rap about this kind of area here? I mean, is it common that marketers don't know how they make money? Oh, God, that scares me that I just said that. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I feel bad, but I don't want to make anybody feel weird. What, what do you think? I think marketers, um, tend, I shouldn't say tend, but are certainly in danger of kind of having two major gaps. Mm. Um, I think one is just understanding to what you referenced, just understanding business in general. 
understanding profitability, understanding cash flow, understanding valuation, right? Mm-hmm. Understanding the, the business side, which is ultimately all the high-level executives really care about. Right. And understanding, okay, I need to understand this because I need to make a connection between what I do and cash flow and profitability and valuation. Because that that's ultimately what's driving the business. That's what's driving the stock value, right? That's what's driving the things that my CEO is being compensated on. That's right, what the stockholders right, right. care about and oh, so yeah, forth, yeah. right? So the, you've got to understand that. And then the other thing you've got to understand is that, you know, again, as we kind of alluded to earlier, you've got to understand the technology. You've got to understand that this is this is not just something where I just need to understand pictures and words. I need to understand, at least on a high level, how things work. Mm-hmm. I need to understand on a high level, h- how are we capturing this data? On a high level, um, how does marketing automation work? Um, you know, how, how are we preparing this user experience? Because I, you know, I, I've, I've got to use these tools in order to do my job right. in order to drive the metrics that are meaningful yeah. that end up connecting to those bigger business goals, right, those right. bigger business metrics that are going to be important to the, to the C-suite. So you've, you've got to understand the technology. You've got to understand the business. You've got to understand, of course, you know, true marketing, right? And you've got to, you've got to blend all those things together in the right way in order for a marketer to really do their job today. And, and that's, that's a, you know, it's a challenge. I think it's, it's something that as an industry we're getting better at, but I think there's still very much a transition in terms of how we learn all those different levers and how they work together in order for the, the, the overall business to be uh, impacted positively and move forward. Critical, critical stuff. Well, so you, you, you've, you've spoken a lot today about you know, the different ways marketers need to approach digital transformation, the different ways diversity of perspectives, the different ways leaderships uh, can, can inject themselves and, and help guide the strategy. If, if you had to boil it all down into a, a powerful shot of information, what, what's your one piece of advice for the audience in regards to dr- digital transformation? I think it really comes down to saying, I, if I'm going to really transform this organization, or maybe more accurately saying it, if I'm going to put this organization in a position to be able to constantly transform the way it needs to as the world does around it, then I'm going to need to put into place the proper foundation and framework to say, these are the fundamental tools and tactics we need to do our work. This is the the data that we're getting in from these tools and tactics. This is how I'm analyzing it. And then this is how I'm using it to experiment and iterate. And if I do those, those very fundamental things, those foundational fundamental things, then that's going to put me in a position to be in a constant state of transformation. Because now I'm constantly taking in new data and I'm constantly using that to make new and better decisions. And that, that cycle never ends. Um, but you've got you've to set yourself up to start the cycle. Mm. Because if you're stuck from starting the cycle, then, then you're keeping yourself from making meaningful change. And the world is changing. So eventually, you're going to get left behind. You're going to find yourself being you know, a dinosaur in a modern world. And eventually, you're going to go extinct. And then millions of years will use your body to fuel our cars. Exactly. Uh, we're just going to go <laughs> all the way into the metaphor. <laughs> no, I, it's amazing. And I think it, it, it's cool that right here at the end, digital transformation isn't a plateau. It isn't a thing. It isn't a goal. It's a voyage because you're constantly going to be transforming like the world around you changes. I mean, did that blow my mind? I think it did. <laughs> uh anyway that's it that i guess i i ended it with a statement um no, but the goal is constant transformation uh and uh shamir uh, you've said so many wonderful things um you have a great uh approach uh to to understanding these things and it seems like you really can v- vibe with people's frustrations both at the c-suite and the marketing practitioner level i'm i'm positive people want to hang out with you and learn more about you how how can people find you online and learn more about shamir 
yeah, if, if they want to, you know, read about my musings and rantings, um, feel free to, to, to follow me on LinkedIn. Um, I, you know, I try to post on there regularly and, and just, you know, share my perspective from a, a couple of different angles, just so people can understand the, those key fundamental parts and, um, and, and just help people to articulate those things as well. So yeah, please follow me on LinkedIn and, uh, and please feel free to comment. And let me know what you think. Cheese or chocolate? Are you ready? I, I'm ready, I think. Okay. No, you are. Uh, right. Here we go. Cheese or chocolate? Ooh, uh, cheese. By foot or by public transit? Oh. Public transit. Okay. All right. You get to see the city. Uh, yeah. Sleep under the stars or sleep at a five-star hotel? Five-star hotel. I know. It's like you want to tell people, oh, I'd love to be out in nature. No, nah, yeah. I'd like no. to be in some sheets. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Trampoline or bouncy castle? Oh, trampoline. Okay. All right. A buffet with Warren Buffett or beekeeping with Jeff Bezos? Buffet with Warren Buffett. Totally. And finally, this is, this is, this is crazy. I don't know why I picked this one, but... Rolling Stones or the Beatles? Oh, I go with the Beatles. It's it's the only answer. I'm sorry. And if people think the Rolling Stones, it's fine. Uh, but, but they're you... wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. I was thinking it. You said it. <laughs> what gets measured? is a Ninja Cat podcast. Please rate and review the show wherever you find your podcasts. Share this episode on social and visit us on the web at ninjacat.io.